Good morning. I'm Dave Apsley. I'm a forester and a natural resources specialist with Ohio State University Extension. Today I'm at the Vinton Furnace State Forest and I'd like to introduce you to red elm or slippery elm. Red elm is one of the more common elm species in Ohio. We've actually got two very common elms in Ohio, the red elm or slippery elm and the American elm. Both are found throughout the state and both are found throughout most of the eastern United States. They both grow on fairly moist sites down here low on the slope. You'll find them scattered throughout the woods as well. Um, I see probably American elm almost exclusively down low like this along edges, along stream sides. You'll see red elm a little bit more scattered up in the woods. Um, they can become quite a large tree. We don't see as many large ones as there probably were prior to Dutch elm disease because both of those species are susceptible to that disease. But they're out here, they're pretty common. So how do I identify red elm or slippery elm? Well, the first thing I would look at is the leaves. And you'll notice these leaves are very large. Um, they can be anywhere from about four to seven inches in length and about two to four inches in width. And these things are easily six inches in length and easily three or four inches in width. Fairly common for this species. Not to say that American elm can't have larger leaves if it's a sprout or growing in very shaded conditions, but on average these leaves are quite a bit larger than American elm leaves. Like the other elms, they all have a base of the leaf that is uneven or asymmetrical. So I like to call it lopsided. Um, the two bases of the leaves just don't match up. If you look at the edge, you're going to see teeth and they're doubly serrate. So you've got large teeth with smaller teeth on that edge. And then they come to a nice sharp point at the tip. Slippery elm or red elm has another neat characteristic that makes it unique. It has a scabrous or sandpaper-like surface. So if you rub your hands on it, it's very rough and sandpapery. I'll put it up by the mic here. Hopefully you can hear that. Very rough and sandpapery. If you rub it on your face, it, it hurts a little bit. If you rubbed it really hard, it would really hurt. American elm can have a little bit of a rough surface, but a lot of times it's pretty glossy or almost slick. And then occasionally in the shade, American elm will be sandpapery just slightly, where this one's very consistently rough or scabrous. Again, leaf size can vary, but on average, red elm or slippery elm leaves are much larger than American elm leaves. And I just picked up a little branch to show the difference. This is American elm over here. Fairly typical size here for American versus a typical size red elm or slippery elm leaf. Another great ID characteristic is the twig. If you think about it, large leaf is gonna take a large twig to support it. And that's true with any tree species. But I typically see a much larger, fatter, more stout twig on slippery elm than I do American elm. So that's a great way to separate the two. And also there's a color difference. A slippery or a red elm twig is typically gray, light in color, and the buds are dark in color. They're either gonna be nearly black or kind of a reddish brown to black color to them. And so there's a contrast in color between the bud and the twig. Very distinct difference in color. If we compared it to this American elm twig, which is much finer, you're gonna see a brown twig and a brown bud and the color is almost identical. So no contrast on American, distinct contrast on the twigs of slippery or red elm. Neither elm has a true terminal bud, so when we look at the bud on the tip, it's gonna look a lot like the bud on the side. The twigs can be a little bit fuzzy or hairy and almost got a similar feel to the leaves. Another great ID characteristic is this bark. Um, they both have kind of a spongy bark, uh, but this one, if we were to break a piece of the bark in two and we look at it in cross section, it's gonna be reddish in color. So it's gonna be uniform red brown in cross section where American elm is gonna have a spongy bark. You're gonna have distinct layers of white and reddish brown and then white. It's like a peanut butter sandwich where this is gonna be uniform reddish brown in color. If we were to cut into this bark and get into that inner bark, you're gonna get a real slick or slippery material that's produced. 
And actually red or slippery elm was used for medicinal purposes. If you chew on that, it actually soothes your throat if you have a sore throat. Uh, there's stories of professional baseball players that actually carried that in their pocket and doctored the baseball with that because it's kind of a, uh, I don't know how to describe it. It's mucilaginous, it's kind of slippery. If you chew on it, it does soothe your throat. Um, I don't recommend taking a healthy uh, red elm and cutting into the bark because you're gonna damage it, but that is what it has been used for historically. We look at this tree, it tends to be a decent self pruner. So you're not typically gonna find a lot of low branches on a mature tree like this. American elm probably doesn't prune as well. Uh, often, more often you're gonna find red elm that actually could be used for lumber purposes. And that's where it gets its common name, the red elm, because the wood is kind of a brownish color or even a reddish brown color. And that's where it gets its name, red elm. So thank you so very much for your time today. And please take at least a part of your day to enjoy it in the woods.